Welcome to the little railway which runs across the farm. This clip was filmed a few years ago when the track was a simple up and down line across the fields. Here we are arriving at the Terman station beside the engine shed. What we really wanted to create was a turning or run round loop at one end of the line. This would mean the journeys could be twice as long there and back again. The first job was to start digging out a cutting so that the line could be shifted over to give it room to run round the rear of the engine shed. This first part of the excavation was done by hand with picks and shovels and a wheelbarrow. So many plums fall from a tree above that I think this will be known as plum cutting or if you want to be rather more posh, Victoria cutting. The spoil dug out from this first part of the cutting was used to make up a short embankment behind the shed. But that was the easy bit. For the rest of the turning loop, a long embankment was needed. This called for mechanisation. Luckily, Mark, the farmer, owns a spectacular digger. Here it is at work, clearing the site ready for building the embankment. The embankment was made up with about 50 tonnes of chalk which was left over from a previous job. Here it is being delivered by the farmer with more of his huge machines. It's really quite a good idea to be on friendly terms with a farmer if you're building a railway. I guess it also helps that Mark's dad was Grandpa Gerald who built the original line across the farm here. Here you can see the digger has placed the chalk along the route and it's now compacting it to make it into a really good and solid base. The next job was to set down some edging bricks to hold the ballast stones in place and to stop them from falling down the sides of the embankment. With the edging in place, now it was time to spread ballast onto the track bed. For this, a friend William came to stay for a week to help build a new line. Some of you might remember William from a few years ago when he used to drive the train on the old garden line when we lived in Scotland. He starred in some of the other videos when he was much younger. In a few hours the ballast was finished and it was time to get down to some serious track making. Here we are cutting sleepers from house roof battens. These were left over from when we built our house. I kept them back specially for this exact purpose of course. Here are Harry and I drilling the holes in the sleepers. These are for the screws which hold down the rails. and here are the sleepers stacked up like a giant Jenga game with oily wood preservative poured over them to stop them from going rotten in the wet winters. Next it was time to prepare the rails. Here's Peter rolling them to give them a special bend for the curves. Now drilling the ends of the rails for the fish plate bolts so they can be joined together. At last we're ready to start laying the track and putting down more ballast. A spirit level helps to get the rails perfectly level or banked up to one side for fast running through the curves. It wasn't long before Bongo or Fiery Fox could be run onto the first length of track to pose for a picture even if it is still a dead end. But with Peter, Harry and William's help it didn't take long to finish the turning loop. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this of the clips and pictures about building part of a small railway. Now you can ride on the front buffer beam of Bongo, or Fiery Fox in the books, while we go on the inaugural run up the line, round the loop and back down to the terminus station.
Thank you for watching from me, Chris Vine, author of the Peters Railway books. Bye bye.